glad that you are here this morning on Facebook Live with me for a very special virtual Sunday School lesson. And um, this morning is a special day in the life of the church. It's, um, it's a special day that we remember every year. And I've got some things out here that probably remind you. Maybe you're, you can see them. This is another reminder of what today is. Today is Palm Sunday, right? It's a special day in the life of the church. And we're gonna be talking about what happens on, or what we remember, what we celebrate on this day. Um, but, as we get started this morning, I wanted to ask you and your family, what is a special event, or it could be a holiday, or it could be something that you remember, a day that you remember every year. Every year, just like we celebrate Palm Sunday every year in the church. So right now, with your family, I would like to invite you to talk about what is a special event or a special day or a special holiday that you celebrate with your family every year. Uh, maybe it's someone that you honor on a special day. Um, or maybe it's something that has happened that you remember again and again. So visit with your family about the whatever that is. And if you wanna share in the comments, you're welcome to do that. Um, I, we celebrate birthdays at my, in my family, and that's a day that we celebrate every year. And there's also big holidays that I bet you celebrate with your family like I do every year. Um, so, thank you for sharing. Again, my name is Miss Sabrina. Welcome to Virtual Sunday School this morning, and we're going to be talking about Palm Sunday. So, to get ready for Palm Sunday, I want to ask you to maybe grab some supplies. If you have a piece of paper, it could be construction paper, it could be a plain piece of paper. Maybe your mom and dad, maybe they got the e-weekly, maybe they printed out a palm branch coloring page from the e-weekly. But if they didn't, you know what, that is perfectly fine because all you're gonna need is your own palm. You're gonna, you're gonna need just your own palm. So we are gonna be making palm branches this morning and um, we wave palm branches on Palm Sunday because we remember the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem and it was a big parade and people were waving whatever was near them and where the, where the people lived there were palm trees and they got palm branches and wave them as Jesus came down the road. And so we are gonna make some this morning because we can't be together and have an actual palm branch like we usually do on this day. Um, so I want you to grab a piece of paper, and you know what? If you can't find any paper, you can go to your recycling bin and you can get something out of there. You can just get a piece of, of um, mail that maybe you had in there. And I'm gonna use this to make my palm branch this morning. So, I'm just gonna take off one of the pieces of paper. And I'm gonna fold it in half because my hand is kind of big. But you know what? I bet some of you have small hands. You might be able to fold it two times and be able to fit your hand on that piece of paper. But my hand, I can only, only fold it one time to fit my hand on there. So you're gonna lay your hand on there, and then 
then let's see, I'm going to just take a crayon and you have a pencil or a pen and I'm just going to trace around my palm like so. So just trace around your hand and if you happen to have the, um, the coloring page from the eWeekly, you can color that at, or just cut it out. Whatever you would like to do is fine. So I just traced my hand, just like so. You can kind of see it, it's not real dark. And now I'm gonna take some scissors and we're gonna cut out the tracing of our hand. And then we're gonna have two hands. So just cut out your handprint. And you know what? If you are still looking for paper and scissors, that is just fine. Because one of the neat things about Facebook Live, you can go back and watch it again. So no worries if you are still getting your supplies. As we prepare for Palm Sunday. And as you are cutting out your palms, your hand print. I would like to invite you to share in the comments how your school, your online school is going. I know here in DeSoto that you all started that this week. So I invite you to share how that is going. I hope that it's going well. I hope you're enjoying getting back to doing some learning and hopefully you've gotten to maybe see some of the faces of your teachers and your classmates as you have been doing your online schooling. All right, I'm almost done with this hand print there. And see, we can just put this leftover piece right back in the recycling bin. There we go. All right, so I've got my two my two hand um, outlines, and you might have four if your hand was small enough to fold your paper more. And then we wanna put these on something so that we can create a palm branch to wave, right? So maybe at your house, you might have a popsicle stick. This one, I used a, a big um, craft stick or a popsicle stick. Um, you might in your house have a paint stirrer stick. You know what? You might even want to just, just for today, you could borrow a ruler to attach your, um, your palms to. You know what else? Let's see, what else? I'm looking in my recycle bin here, and you know what? I've got this box, and it's kind of strong, right? So I'm just going to cut a piece of the box off. I love the recycle bin. You know, the palm branches that we would have had if we were able to get together are from a company called Eco Palms. It's, a, it's an organization that um, they source palm branches that are friendly to the environment. So you know what, we're being friendly to our environment by using stuff from the recycle bin too. All right, so I'm gonna use this piece of cardboard and I am just gonna take my hand prints and there are lots of options. You can just use a piece of tape and tape it on there. You could use a stapler. Staple your palms on there. You could use a glue stick to glue them on there. You know, for this one, I printed out the coloring page. I didn't even cut it out. I just stapled it to a piece of my box, and I have a palm branch ready to wave. And if you want to get really fancy, you are welcome to do that. Like this one, I, I colored the coloring page, and then I used it as a template and cut up, cut up one of these out of green paper another thing you can do um, and attach those to one of my paint stir sticks. So whatever you have at your house will work. 
Um, and if you wanted to, you could color. You could color your palms. And if you don't have green paper, use any color from the rainbow. All right, so we've got our palms. And now I would like to read to you the story about Palm Sunday. I'm gonna read from our Spark Story Bible. And as a reminder, moms and dads and families, if you would like to borrow one of the Spark Story Bibles that we use at a Sunday school and we use at Children's Church, you are welcome to contact the church office. You can contact me, Pastor Jeff, the church office, and we would be happy to leave one of those uh, story Bibles on your doorstep. Okay, so let's read about Palm Sunday. Friends, Jesus said to his disciples, I need to go to Jerusalem. I've got some important things to do, and I want to celebrate Passover with you there. Will you come with me? Sure, said the disciples. Passover is a great holiday. Such good food and what a wonderful story Passover celebrates. The exodus of God's people, the Israelites from Egypt. It's good to be with friends and family at Passover. So Jesus and his friends started to go to Jerusalem. When they got close to the city, Jesus said, I'd like you two of you to go borrow a donkey in the next village. Please tell the owner I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends came back with a donkey, Jesus climbed on its back and rode down the hill into the city of Jerusalem. The disciples followed behind him. Suddenly, they found themselves in a parade. People were singing and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes God's king. Hosanna, praise God. People all over heard the shouting and singing and they joined the parade too. Hundreds of people, thousands of people. They started taking off their coats and laying them on the ground for Jesus and the donkey to walk on. They pulled palm branches down from the trees and waved them as they sang. Then they threw their palms on the ground to make a path for Jesus. The crowds gave Jesus a royal welcome as he rode into the city, just like a king. But Jesus was a very different king. He was a king of peace. Not everyone understood that. Jesus was not at all what they were expecting. They thought the crowd was too loud and the parade was getting too big. Who is that man? Someone asked, what's going on here? Asked another. The crowd answered, this is Jesus, God's king. He has come to save us. Some of the religious leaders murmured, hush, Jesus, tell your friends to be quiet. It's way too loud here. But Jesus said, we can try to make these people be quiet, but that wouldn't make a difference because today the whole earth is celebrating. Well, thank you for listening to that story about Palm Sunday. And if you're still crafting your palms for, um, for our Palm Sunday worship, that is fine. You have plenty of time, plenty of time. And like I said, if you um, would like to watch this video again, you're welcome to when you have um, a chance to maybe gather more supplies. But I hope that you um, will, will put together a really simple palm branch so that you'll be ready when it is time at 10 for worship. Now, I have 
a couple of things I want to share with you and your parents. We want to invite you to help with our Easter worship that is in just one week. Can you believe it? Just one week till Easter. And so if you um, and your parents or maybe a brother or sister would like to, we are inviting you to read our scripture for um, Easter Sunday and to read the Lord's Prayer and to video you doing that and then sending us the video. So if you and your family are interested, you can email me, Miss Sabrina, um, and um, I think we're getting my email in the comments from our for our video today. But my email is youthfamily, Y-O-U-T-H-F-A-M-I-L-Y, at DeSotoUNC.org. And so send me an email and let me know if your family would like to help. We, we need to receive your video by tomorrow before you go to bed tomorrow. Um, so if you can help, we would appreciate it. And also this afternoon for our third, fourth and fifth graders, we have Bible Explorers. Bible Explorers and instead of coming together here in Fellowship Hall like we usually do, we are going to meet on Zoom. So um, I have been sending out messages to your parents. If you are new and you, would, you have an upper elementary student who would like to participate in Bible Explorers, you please email me and I will include your family in the communication about the link. And we are gonna meet at four o'clock for Bible Explorers today. That's a little bit earlier than you usually meet, but um, since we usually start with a meal and we're not able to do that virtually on the computer, we're gonna start at four o'clock for Bible Explorers. Um, so, as we saw in our story, not, not everyone was happy about um, the parade and about Jesus coming um, and about the excitement that the people had for Jesus. And so, Palm Sunday starts an important week in the life of the church called Holy Week. Holy Week, and um, this um, this year we have been looking at scriptures in the book of Matthew, and um, so as um, as you keep working on your palm branches for worship, I just want to share an idea that you and your family could do together uh, this week during Holy Week. Um, as we talked about last time, Holy Week is the week where we remember Jesus' last week on earth and all of the experiences that Jesus had. And so I would like to invite you to make a Holy Week centerpiece. Now, if you have a basket, you could use a basket. If you don't have a basket, that's fine. I also, I you could use just a pie tin. You could use a plate, um, but something that you could put on the center of your table and um, to make a Holy Week centerpiece. And so what are the things that we would put in a Holy Week centerpiece? Hmm, well, we're gonna put the scriptures for Holy Week. So I just wrote down on a piece of paper um, a scripture for every day, and these are all from the Gospel of Matthew. Now mine's just a piece of paper. You might have index cards. So, oh, Pat, we're gonna get some help with um, with getting those scriptures posted for you. So what 
what might we put in there? So we're going to be putting things in our Holy Week centerpiece that remind us of all that Jesus experienced during, um, during this week. So I have some story eggs that are left over from last year. So I'm just going to start opening some of my story eggs and see, oh, this one's empty. Now that's important. So why would we have something that is empty? Well, on Easter morning, the women went to the tomb where they had put Jesus' body and it was empty. So that's the end of the story right there, isn't it? Let's see. I've got maybe more empty eggs than I think. I think maybe some of these are not part of my story eggs. My goodness. Well, there's a whole lot of rejoicing going on because we got some empty eggs to remind us of the empty tomb. Okay, here's one that has something in it. So I'm gonna take this out of my story egg and I'm gonna put it in my centerpiece because this reminds me of what? We were just talking about it at the beginning. Palm Sunday. So this reminds us of the beginning of the week. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, look at that. So here is a piece of, um, of gauze or wrapping that, that people use whenever they have um, an injury. So this reminds us that they wrapped Jesus's body and they laid it in the tomb. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Um, ooh, I've got, ooh, it's kind of come apart, but I've got a little cracker here, which reminds me of the Last Supper. So this was the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples. So the cracker, you could use a piece of bread you could um, you could cut out the shape of a cup because Jesus had bread and he had wine um, as he uh, celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. Let's see if any of these other things in here have anything in them. I wonder, oh my goodness, here's one. The cross. So here's the cross, um, and we put this in our centerpiece because Jesus died on the cross for all of us so that we can forever be in relationship with God and our sins are forgiven. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Ooh, I found a stone. Right, so after they wrapped Jesus' body and laid Jesus in the tomb, they put a rock in front of the tomb to seal it. Now, let's see, I just have some other things in my basket here. So, here's a little donkey that might go with Palm Sunday because Jesus rode in on the donkey. Let's see, I've got flower. You could keep a flower here because flowers grow where? They grow in a garden. And after the Last Supper, Jesus prayed in the garden. Jesus prayed in the garden. Another thing I have here, hmm, I have a rooster. Do you guys remember the story about Peter? Yeah. I'm gonna let you read about the story about Peter to see why a rooster would fit into our centerpiece here. Yes, so, ooh, I have a butterfly, a butterfly. I like to include a butterfly because butterflies, do they start out with these beautiful wings? No, they don't, they are transformed. They go into their cocoon, and when they make that cocoon, they're still just a caterpillar. And then when they come out, they're a beautiful butterfly. Just like Jesus went into the tomb, he was dead, but the tomb then was empty and he was alive. 
So I invite you to make a Holy Week centerpiece and to read those scriptures from Matthew. And if you want to, you know, I got out of my Holy or my Lent bag, you could have put a candle. Remember to talk with your parents about safely using a candle. You could take one of the um, clothespins that represents the human figure. This could be, you could talk about one of the disciples when you use that. There's also, there was a feather in our um, lint in a bag that reminded us of when Jesus went to the temple and turned over the tables because he was so upset that, that God's house, that the temple was being turned into a marketplace instead of a place to worship. So there are all kinds of ideas, and I bet as you read from the Gospel of Matthew this week that you will have more ideas that you can include as you share these stories with your family. And you know what? If you read two stories one night and you forget the next night, that's fine. That's fine. Just enjoy your centerpiece and reading the gospel as we um, remember and celebrate this very important week um, in the life of the church and in Jesus's life. So friends, um, I, again, I am Miss Sabrina and I am the Children, Youth, and Family Ministry Coordinator here at DeSoto United Methodist Church I am glad that you joined me this morning for this virtual Sunday school lesson, and I hope that you will have your palm branches ready for worship that starts at, um, at 10 o'clock, just a little while from now. Um, before we go, I would like to say a prayer as we finish our time together this morning. And I hope you have a blessed week. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much and for coming to live among us in the world. Help us remember your love and the hope you bring as we journey with you during Holy Week. Amen. Amen, friends. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you back here for worship in just a little while at 10 o'clock.